All right, guys. Hey there. Um, yeah, I'm back again. Um, so welcome to uh, this lecture, which is going to be all about um, how uh, humans impact the atmosphere. Um, we're going to have a look at um, uh, what global warming is. Uh, specifically, we're going to have a look at uh, why burning fossil fuels is uh, so bad for the environment. We're going to look at the how global warming impacts our, our Earth. Uh, and then we're going to have a little look at uh, causation versus correlation. Right. So, um, basically, the composition of the Earth's atmosphere has been very, very similar for thousands of years now. Um, ever since uh, animals evolved to be able to live on land, the amount of gases in the atmosphere has has stayed pretty much exactly the same ever since. Um, now, a lot of people are surprised when I give what the actual values are. I think a lot of people think that the the gas that's that is the most in the atmosphere is oxygen or carbon dioxide. But actually, the most abundant gas in the atmosphere is one that doesn't really do anything at all. It's nitrogen. Nitrogen, which has the symbol N2, um, is... Uh, about 78 to 80 percent of the atmosphere um, so this is vastly the majority of the atmosphere now when nitrogen was produced nitrogen doesn't react with anything it's an inert gas it does not do chemical reactions so as nitrogen was produced it just started to stay in the atmosphere it never got removed by anything Whereas oxygen and carbon dioxide get used up by animals, plants during photosynthesis and respiration. So the nitrogen kind of just stays very much the same in the atmosphere. The next part, about 20% of our atmosphere, is oxygen. Um, oxygen is uh, obviously has a symbol O2 um, and is uh, the oxygenated atmosphere is responsible for us to be able to breathe. Um, this is the reason why we're able to breathe the air. Right, the next one is probably going to be a surprise as well, because the the next one percent is argon, AR. It's another inert gas that doesn't really do anything. Uh, it's a noble gas, um, uh, and uh, yeah, it just kind of like hangs around the air. And then the remaining 1% is every other gas. However, carbon dioxide is only 0.04% of the atmosphere. So we're talking about a fraction of a fraction of a percent for, um, uh, for the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere. I don't think a lot of people understand that the amount of carbon dioxide is so small in the atmosphere. So if the amount of carbon dioxide is so small, why are we so worried about it? Well, when carbon dioxide was 0.03%, we had an ice age. So if we think about going from 0.03 to 0.04, to 0.05, then we're going to see a massive increase in uh, in the global temperature. Now, we are burning a lot of fuels. And because we're burning a lot of fuels, we're doing the combustion reaction. If you remember, um, that's we're taking you know a fuel and it's going to create uh, uh, carbon dioxide and water. And this carbon dioxide is a waste product and ends up going up into the air, the atmosphere. Now, carbon dioxide is what's known as a greenhouse gas. When it goes into the air, it insulates the earth, kind of a bit like uh, wearing a blanket. And it traps the heat into the earth, which means that the earth slowly and slowly gets warmer. This process is known as global warming. Um, I'm sure that you've heard of this. It's a, it's a big 
topic right now because the amount that we're burning in fossil fuels is going to have a severe impact on our planet. Um, you may also have may have also heard this being called the greenhouse effect. Uh, we said this already, but carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Now this is how global warming works. So have a have a look at this diagram as we're going through it. So there's a layer of carbon dioxide around the Earth. You can sort of see that here. Uh, let me just get a little pointer. Oh, where's the pointer? Laser pointer. There we go. So you can see this here. Um, this area is sort of the atmosphere, um, and, and the carbon dioxide forms an invisible layer around the Earth there. Now, obviously the sun here will produce heat energy, and that heat energy will go onto the Earth, and it will warm up the Earth. The Earth will get warmer. Some of that heat will be reflected, so it will just bounce off the earth and bounce back into space. Some of that heat will be absorbed by the earth and that will make the earth warm. Now, this is all very natural. This is just what always happens. The greenhouse effect is the next bit. So some of that energy will go up into the carbon dioxide and then the, those greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, will absorb the radiation and then emit that radiation back down to Earth. Because of that, the temperature is going to become warmer. So the carbon dioxide is trapping the heat energy and slowly and slowly and slowly making the temperature of the Earth warmer. Now, if our Earth becomes too hot, one of the things that could happen is something called climate change. This is really, really bad. We'll have more risk of dangerous weather, things like hurricanes. The ice at the North and the South Pole could melt which would increase the water level of the earth, which would cause flooding. Animals can go extinct because the extra heat could destroy their habitat. Um, and if we have less rainfall, uh, because it's hotter, there'll be less rain. Uh, a lot of places will experience a drought, which is where there's no water uh, to drink. So this is a really, really serious issue. Um, and one that I don't think people are really taking seriously, especially governments. So the longer that we burn fossil fuels, the more carbon dioxide we will make. And, so, and what we'll get is a, is a bigger increase of global temperature. You can see here in, my, in this graph, this is what this shows. Um, the blue line sort of represents the amount of carbon dioxide that's uh, in the atmosphere from 1964 to 2008. And the red line shows the change in global temperature. Now, obviously, temperature is going to fluctuate. It's not a, uh, it's, it, it goes up and down due to climate, weather, whatever. But you can see the trend here is that as the carbon dioxide is increasing, so the carbon dioxide levels are going up, that's the blue line here, the temperature tends to go up at the same time. So this is a, uh, you can see there's a real serious correlation here. As the carbon dioxide increases, the temperature increases. There is a correlation. Now, you have to be careful about graphs like this because correlation does not mean causation. A correlation just means that two things have the same pattern. Causation means that one of them causes the other. I'll show you what I mean. It's easier to give examples than to explain it. 
but just because two things are the same on a graph, it does not mean that they are related to each other. A good example for this is this graph here. You can see that sour cream consumption in the United States correlates with the number of, of motorcycle deaths uh, in transport and non-collision transport accidents. So do motorcycle accidents uh, 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 cause, are, are motorcycle accidents caused by sour people eating sour cream? Obviously not. Obviously not. This is just random chance. Motorcycle accidents are not caused by sour cream. This is just a random spurious chance of variables. There is another thing. Uh, it, it could be that you get a correlation because of a third variable. Have a look at this graph here that shows you the months of the year um, and uh, the amount of ice cream that's sold and the number of shark attacks that there are. You might think that ice cream causes shark attacks. Is that true? Well, no, of course not. But what actually happens is that more people will swim in the sea in the summer. And if you swim in the sea, you're more likely to get attacked by a shark. And more people eat ice cream in the summer. So there's a third variable there. Summer causes people to buy ice cream. Summer causes people to get bitten by sharks. So these two things are correlated, but they're correlated because of a third variable. We're, uh, so we need to know, does carbon dioxide cause global warming? We have a significant amount of evidence that it does. So these two things are correlated, but we have got evidence that uh, uh, that carbon dioxide will absorb infrared radiation. You can see this here. This is an infrared uh, scan. You can see these are the uh, different gases that are in the atmosphere. And carbon dioxide here, you can see there's a huge amount of, uh, of absorption there in the infrared. So because this carbon dioxide absorbs so much infrared, we can prove that global warming is caused by carbon dioxide. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.